Tonight, much of the world continues to watch and wait and worry about what happens next in Ukraine. Putin's every move scrutinized. In Mother Russia, Putin's power remains absolute. Hurra! If we talk about Putin's strategic goals, actually it's only one, and it's very simple, as for every dictator, is to stay in power forever. Garry Kasparov, once the greatest chess player in the world, fled Russia in 2013, fearing retribution after criticizing Putin. Putin's Russia is not a classical dictatorship because it has no ideology. It's more like a mafia state. The modern day czar has been in power unopposed since 1999 even altering constitutional term limits to allow him to run again in 2024. Many Russians actually like the fact that he kind of shows to the West is not a rug under the Western feet. And if you're not going to recognize us when we speak to you, at least you're going to be freaked out by what we do. Nina Khrushcheva is the great granddaughter of Nikita Khrushchev, a former strongman who left the Soviet Union during its glory days. She believes that Putin is playing the long game to put Russia at the world's center stage. Russia suffers from a tremendous superiority complex because of its size and its history and its potential, and also tremendous inferiority complex, precisely because it's never really accepted into being a European country. Putin's persona as a strong, stern leader, fueled by flamboyant photo ops prior to the pandemic and the brutal crushing of his opponents. Born in St. Petersburg in 1952, Putin was the third son and the only one to survive. He was from a modest background and he wasn't particularly a great student, but he was interested in history and he was very enamored with a lot of KGB related films. In the 70s, he turned that fascination into a career, joining the KGB, the Soviet Union secret police, becoming a mid-level spy. Although the KGB technically ended with the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, Putin's experience as an intelligence officer in watching the Soviet Union dissolve made its mark. He was a junior officer stationed in East Germany. He was a keen analyst and observer and would understand how much the Soviet Union needed to reform, how far behind it was falling from the West. And he seems to have carried those attitudes home. He eventually became the chief of Russia's counterintelligence agency, the FSB. There, he targeted rebels in countries that had separated from the Soviet Union when it dissolved. Putin. His success against Russia's enemies, quickly propelling him to prime minister in 1999. He was elected as acting president the year after and has held on to power ever since. Putin has not been afraid of military conflict in the past, repeatedly launching Russian troops into former Soviet Union territories. Czechia, Georgia, and most recently, Crimea. Putin's actions against the Republic of Georgia, Putin's actions attacking Ukraine and annexing Crimea, they were regional acts. When in 2014, protesters in Kyiv overthrew the pro-Russian Ukrainian president demanding democracy, a violent uprising known as the Revolution of Dignity, we look at the revolution of 2013-2014 as a popular uprising, right? A good thing. But it also was a coup d'etat. It was protesters occupying the capital, paralyzing the government, and eventually toppling a legitimately elected president. There is a January 6th kind of anger and obsession, not just Putin, but many Russians and many Russians living in eastern Ukraine see the governments that followed as illegitimate. In response, Putin swiftly invaded and annexed the peninsula on Ukraine's southern front. Even when he's rattling sabers, he's doing it in a calculated fashion to garner domestic support and get the best possible concessions, the best possible future environment for Russia's security that he possibly can. To threaten Putin's authority is to risk one's life. Putin accused of silencing his critics through violence, including Alexei Navalny, once called the man Vladimir Putin fears most. He's led anti-Putin rallies across the country, where he's been publicly beaten and nearly blinded when a green substance was sprayed in his face. Navalny continued to be an outspoken critic of Putin until two years ago, when he was poisoned, exposed to the deadly nerve agent Novichok, which was developed as part of a secret Soviet chemical weapons program. Putin's feeling is that you should crush dissent at the earliest possible moment. 
So he is very sensitive to people who might be rivals. There have been poisonings in the UK. Navalny, when he started to develop his own domestic political persona, gets poisoned. It's, it's a consistent pattern. Navalny was evacuated to Germany, eventually recovering there, but was arrested on arrival after returning to Russia just over a year ago and still awaits trial in jail. Navalny's case essentially killed all the opposition because very few de demonstrations happen. It's dead. Essentially, opposition is dead. The absolute ruler now escalating tensions to a boiling point with the West and rolling the dice with his place in history. Putin's legacy to date is one of strengthening Russia and regaining respect in the world and mostly improving the economy. Were he to launch a major invasion of Ukraine, all of that would be destroyed.